Okay, I think we are now live, hopefully. Uh, so, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to some Saturday evening, afternoon, morning sprints. Uh, I am joined by some lovely ladies today for some sprinting. Um, if you want to like introduce yourselves or... Uh, I'm Evie, my channel, she was only Evie. I apparently just do discussions nowadays, so if you want to discuss books, I'm totally down for it. So, <laughs> love it. But I, but I read a bunch of different things: fantasy, sci-fi, horror, which is what I'm working on right now. I'm just getting ready to start. So, very nice. Um, my name's Stephanie. My channel is Stephanie's Bookverse, and I read mainly fantasy, but every once in a while, I'll throw other stuff in there as well. <laughs> Sorry, my husband just came. <laughs> <laughs> looking in two different directions now um i'm sarah my channel is sarah reads i read a lot of fantasy but with some other things sprinkled in too stephanie sarah what are you reading this evening afternoon i mean i'm stuck in like it's 7 p.m for me so it's 7 p.m for everyone <laughs> but actually it's, it's not noon for me um but yeah so I'm reading Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass, continuing on with the Throne of Glass series, which I know Abby's <laughs> excited about. <laughs> For the first time? First time. Uh, yeah. You're a big I, fan of that one, aren't you, Sarah? The Throne of Glass. I do like the Throne of Glass. I like them more as I went on. So I, I read them a long time ago and I was not on BookTube. So I didn't know that there was like this huge Sarah J. Mass, like, cult and so I just read them on my own and I thought the first one was okay but I like assassin books and I like the like over the top female you know bravado like characters who have a lot of bravado so it was like just good fun but then as I continued I liked them more and more so I was like the first one's okay the second one's pretty good and then I was like okay I need to read every single one immediately now <laughs> I think I, okay. got, I got into it when the only the first two were out and I just became obsessed and then I had to keep waiting for the new releases Oh, I think I had to wait painful. for four. So I I came in as four was coming out, I think. So I had to wait for four or five. That awful one that came, what was it? Was that number six or seven? The one about, well, I can't say, I guess. The Tower of Dawn. I really don't like that book. <laughs> but what, what are you reading, Sarah? Guns of the Dawn. I'm reading, uh, I don't know if Angela's going to be very happy or nervous, but I'm reading Redemption in Indigo. <laughs> Oh, I saw that on your TBR. I'm excited to see what you think. Yeah, so uh, I, um, I'm i like 100 pages in, so it's going well. Uh, only started it this afternoon. And, I'm sorry, um, I was going to say the first video of Angela's I ever saw, I think she was talking about that book. <laughs> it's a very Angela book. <laughs> um, so yeah, literally just started it. And I'm listening to the audio book and I feel like I'm being told a story. Like, you know, like an old folk tale, fairy tale story. Um, so yeah, and I'm jigsaw puzzling, which you can't really see, but it, it's here. Just I love it. how many pieces is this one? I feel like you're the most intense puzzle person that I know. Two thousand thousand. Oh, it's a like Disney one, so you've got loads of Disney um, scenes. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I was on TikTok and I saw this TikTok of this person who did like a thousand or two thousand page puzzle and it was entirely white. And it made me think of you, Abby. I was like, oh, Abby could do that. I could, no, not, I could but not. Abby could. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I why why would anyone want to do a solid colored jigsaw puzzle? Jigsaw puzzles should be, I don't know, have lots of images on them. Well, I agree. That does not sound like just a challenge. Like, can I do it? Yeah. So what's everyone else reading that's here in the chat? Um, I didn't hate Tower of Dawn. I'll forgive you, Angela. And you too, Abby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think Angela's reading Rune of Kings, but I think that was the only one I saw. Mm -hmm. The uh, the book that seems to be like loved or hated. No one. It's the it's the Marmite book. Marmite book. I guess um, Marmite is a very British saying, um, or like, well, it's a British condiment. Um, if you if you're not aware, and you either love it or you hate it, and I'm on the I hate Marmite. I've never um, had it, so I I can't have an opinion. I'm sorry. Nice. 
Ooh. A track of Notre Dame. That is intense. Wait, so what's the unpopular opinion? That it's bad or that it's good? I think she doesn't like it, it sounds okay. like. I love oh, you, I, I'm I'm jealous because that's such a good book. Ooh, Hunchback or Notre Dame. A little hate. Oh, they all came through all in one go. <laughs> they did. Empire of Silence. Ooh, nice. Marmite book. Like what? Like. Like what's what's the closest thing like that marmite is is it like a mustardy thing a mayonnaise type thing neither it well what else <laughs> <laughs> okay so traditionally you have it on toast um i guess some people have it in a sandwich which is even worse but yeah you'd have it on toast you probably have yeah your toast your butter your marmite it's quite yeasty Ooh, um it's so if you're thinking, if you're th okay if you if you think about stock like the flavor of stock but make it into a spread it is a byproduct of beer brewing Ooh. So right. take, the, take the foam that no one wants to drink from the top of your beer solidify it and spread it on a piece of toast i regret asking yes so. Yeah, oh, we've got a pro. Yeasty, salty soy sauce esque flavor with consistency of old engine oil is is what this person described. It as. Ooh, oh, that sounds horrible. As I described that, Sam, Marmite's delicious, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I mean. It's you love it or you hate it. Oh, there's no in between. But is it like? like sorry to, to bring alcohol into this stream but like is it like beer where like no one likes it the first time that you have it and it just grows on some people or do people yeah, instantaneously I think I think people marmite. instantly like it if if you do like marmite I think I think you 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 go straight in with it like you children have it and all ages it's not like you can only have it when you're 18 Ew. 21 but now I kind of want to have it. Like I feel I like we need to, to get some and we need to do this again and everyone needs to eat it, including yeah, you. Like, it, I think it's very much a UK thing because I remember when I was living in France and I had um, one of my colleagues there, she was like, Abby, when you go back to England, can you bring me like the biggest pot of Marmite, please? Like the biggest pot that they do. And like there I was with, with my like going round and finding her the, the biggest pot I could find. And I got back and she was like, oh my God, it's Marmite. Oh, I'm safe. Because you can't get it there. Or if you, you do can get, get it. You it on it's... Amazon. There we go. Yeah. So we could try it's, it. It's risky. Because you may hate it. It's but okay. maybe one person in your family would like it. You just. I bet it. my husband would. He likes weird stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's five ninety nine. It's not going to be a too much of a waste of money. If... Right. I've I've spent more on worse things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't grow on you. It oh, like, it's really called like Vegemite or something. Oh, Vegemite. That's right. I've heard of that. I've had it's God been at least twenty years, but I've I remember Vegemite and I remember. You're just trying to get out of this now, Evie. Don't even bring these fake stories in. This is not you getting out of tasting this. Yeah, no, we're doing this. It's a thing. Oh, no, I, you know, it's in my Amazon cart. I'm going to order it, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. If you can, not that I'm someone that has it, but, like, it, people have it on crumpets, which is also a very British thing. Um, yeah. If you're wanting, like, an upgrade from toast, you could put it on crumpets. I'm just going to say, we're having a, like, crumpets and Marmite party, and Alan doesn't get invited to what is, like, the most British snack of all time. Well, he, he could have arrived and been in the chat if he so wanted to. And, That's true. Uh, well, I was going to say, like, or alternatively, Alan will say, this is not a British snack because he is the arbiter, ar <laughs> arbiter of uh, all things British, apparently. True. Interesting. Hmm. Brit gets the dual, the dual perspective. She's had it in both places. Nice. Marmite and cheese. Yeah, my dad has had like crumpets, layer of Marmite, cheese under the grill so the cheese melts. But where do I get crumpets? See, this is where I'm sticking. 
Mercy. I don't think my grocery store sells these. More, this is becoming a quest now. This is our quest. <laughs> I, I don't know where you would find crumpets. Like, I can find crumpets in my local supermarket, but... Uh... Hmm. It's going to happen now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like this needs to be a live reaction. I, yes. I have been wearing this sweater for probably, like, ever since it arrived. It's a good thing this is not in person. This is, you can only see me, but... Yeah, I I have never attempted to bake a crumpet. Is it hard? They're like sixty p for six or something, so uh, they're pretty inexpensive to buy. Let's normally, see what here. Amazon says, since apparently that's is my uh, is Duffy's crumpets a terrible brand? Duffy's. I, I've never. I've, um, this is the first. I think thing I generally have. I think it's Warburton's crumpets. Warburton. Duffy's crumpets. I found that too. Maybe they're the US equivalent, but the UK you'd have Warburton's. Well, they're Amazon's equivalent. I don't know what that means. (laughs) Welsh cakes. Yeah, that's literally Duffy's is the only thing that's popping up. That's the only thing I can find too. (laughs) Well, maybe that's the one that has unveiled their recipe. So we can, this has now become a baking and marmite. Oh, there you go. This is going to be a square. Social has found crumpets in grocery stores in Massachusetts. All right. So let me know which uh, grocery store chain and I'll, and I'll stop. I think you have that. a better chance than I do. I doubt I can find crumpets in like flipping Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Food and book pairings for the next sprint session. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you make books and food like a thing? Although I think I Jessica love and Kishan tried to do that, like, recipes from books. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But, yeah. There's actually an entire Instagram of recipes from the realm of the elderlings. Hmm. Yeah. Really? They don't like, really sound that appealing. It's based in, like, they create foods from the series, or mm-hmm. it's just, like, inspired by? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, now I have to go find it. But, yeah, they they make recipes for realm of the elderlings type food i'm like kind of cool speaking of which oh crap um i like after i finished this first story from skeleton crew i basically i don't know what i'm gonna be reading because i have two other buddy reads that i'm supposed to do but they're not ready so i'm like do i start royal assassin yes yes so yeah because it's been calling to me. Like a siren song. I can if, it, if, if, that's, if that's the book that's going to make you happy, Evie, then go for it. Well, you know, I love crying and being devastated. So it'll be it'll weird. Make that, that'll give it to you. It sounds like the perfect pairing. Maybe yes. add some Marmite in there as well. <laughs> Just to like round it all off. For the extra tears. Mm-hmm. Okay, so shall we go for 30 minutes until 45? Mm-hmm. Good for me. Sounds good. I'm going to go try to bribe Pippin out here so he can join me. Pippin. I'll be back.
Hello. Stephanie, you looked very ready. Yes, I felt like I nailed it with ending my chapter. <laughs> so I was pretty proud of myself. I looked up and you were like, <laughs> yep. I was like, come on. <laughs> I was like, someone's ready. Yeah. I mean, how often does your chapter end that perfectly? Like, never. Okay, my chapter ended perfectly too. Really? Yeah. Love it. I, I did not end a chapter. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Sarah, but I, I think I'm going to have to kind of throw in the towel on Stephen King, even being forced to read it. I, I can't. I, I can't. For a second, I thought you were talking about Royal Assassin. I was like, what? No, 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 So I was going to start Royal Assassin, and then I got a message saying, yeah, ready to start more, do whenever. So I literally read, like, the glossary of, like, you know, the, like, person, like, character list or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. And then you had to swap to more Duke. Yeah, 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 and that's that's all I read was like literally the character list in Mordu. So, how long oh, is that's that? Even than I thought it was. It's oh god. Well, apparently there's a glossary back here, which I'm not gonna count because holy crap, there's a long glossary. Um, five hundred and twelve pages. Oh, it looks nice. bigger. Yeah, I. It does look bigger than that. Looks and like some the font is fairly large, so it's not as intimidating. Because I swear I've seen it in the bookstore and it wasn't that big, but I totally could be forgetting. Queen I'm sorry, Kyle. <laughs> You're welcome. How'd you guys do? Other than ending on a good chapter, right? I'm assuming enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I feel like reading this um, so late after it's published, it feels very much the YA of that time. Even mm. the names of places like you have like Selena and Elena and like all the, like the names that just sound like that era of YA and yeah. Yeah, it, it just definitely has that feel to it, which is fine because I knew that going in. Um, yeah. Do you read a lot of uh, yeah. I mean, I guess when I read it back in, whenever it was published, 2015, 14, it, it, it was just what was hip at the right. time. Yeah, it's definitely a product of the time. But I don't read a ton of YA. I, um, I read mostly adult, but I do read some here and there. I think it's fun. It's nice to like break it up and I don't know I think it's really fun to do it and I've actually picked this one up I was reading some adult fantasy but I've been sick the last few days and I just wasn't feeling the complicated fantasy stuff so I was like you know what YA is perfect for when you're sick I feel like absolutely I knew I was away with work this week so I was like I may no it was like I can't bring the fantasy with me no 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 it can't happen I'm bringing the romance with me this yeah. week so I read the romance. I was like, I just can't deal with like having to really concentrate when I do have some time to read. Totally get that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, did you know that there's a um, Netflix little like cartoon adaptation of that um, story? Did you watch it, Abby? I watched it, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, it was a great adaptation, but... Is it of yeah. Good Hunting or of Paper Menagerie? Which short good story? Of, of good, good Hunting. Good Hunting. It's um not suitable for children. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. I went and hung up my washing and I also listened to 30 odd pages. Um, and I started putting together the edge of my puzzle. Nice. nice. The edge is the most tricky bit of this one. Like I was delaying earlier by doing like the pretty dress like doing this sort of bit with the lit nice dress uh, because the edge is all like the same pattern just repeated oh yeah that's tough gotcha um so I was like I got all the pieces out and I was like I just don't know if I want to do this edge <laughs> <laughs> I was like let me stick doing the I'll do the pretty dresses to begin with good call 
Mm. Um, yeah. So manage two chapters. Nice. Yes, sometimes an audiobook is just what you need. Yes. That's one of the books that I was interested in because I, I was supposed to judge for the translated fiction for mm -hmm. book two, the book two prize, and then I, I was like, I'm going to bow out of this. Sorry. Um, but what's the that, book two prize? Have I missed something? I don't even really know what this is. Maybe it's either. just um, no, it's, it's, it's more for like literary fiction and like mm. general, like basically non-genre fiction, which is a little perturbed that I had suggested adding the Only Good Indians last year. And I was told no genre fiction. And then they turned around and this year they have a shit ton of horror, sorry, poop ton of horror and fine, science fiction on there. And I'm like, I thought no genre fiction was allowed. Like what the heck? Ugh. But anyways, it's um like the, the channel is called Booktube Prize and they do like judging every year and they have like 40, 48 books, I think, total. And then they like whittle it down with semifinals and quarterfinals and stuff like that. How are people supposed to read 48 books in order to judge this? So it's um you're split up by uh judge groups. So like in it's six books, five to six books in each group. And then uh, different judges for each group. So that's a lot more doable. Oh, damn. that is valid. Yes. Yeah. I I was working from home on Thursday and I had to take a tactical nap. Tactical nap. I, I was like falling asleep at my desk because I got back really late on Wednesday. And I was like, it's fine. I got home at midnight last night. It's not my fault that I'm so tired. Um, so, I, yeah, I went and took a tactical nap. And I said to my boyfriend, I was like, wake me up at half three. Wake me up half three. I woke, I woke up at quarter to four. And I was like, but you, I told you to wake me up. And he's like, yeah, but you just looked so restful. Oh, I hate <laughs> when they do that. I was like, no, no, no. I, I could only take like a few minutes. So I was like. This wasn't meant to be a, a big nap. <laughs> Indeed, justice for Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I didn't get the arc. I'm also very jealous. You applied for it and didn't get it? I just haven't heard. Oh, because I've seen a lot of people on NetGalley getting it, and a lot of them aren't, like, well as big of John Gwynn fans as you are. So I would be surprised. Last time they just gave it to everyone for Shadow of the Gods. It was just like, you wanted it, like, you got it. I feel like NetGalley are ignoring me because I've requested a few things and I've just had radio silence from them. Have you Is been ignoring your unread pile on NetGalley? No, I haven't. I literally have hardly anything that's unread on there. Mm -hmm. Apart from like, I they gave me like plain bad heroines like a year after it was published. I was like, it's a bit it's a bit late now. That's weird. Yeah, that is weird. That's as as someone though. who doesn't really use NetGalley, is it a separate like is is there NetGalley UK and then a US version or a North American version? Yeah, they're different. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder I if maybe that's that. why. Mm. Yeah, maybe that is why. Yeah, I don't really use NetGalley either. I just I feel like I've requested two books and I read one of them and now I'm like, mm, not gonna do it. No. Well, I got the I have just been approved for the um, river of the S.A. Chakraborty short stories in the David Bad World. Oh, oh nice. Um, That's awesome. So I got, I did get that one, but I was like, but what about my other ones? <laughs> <laughs> but also my TBR is very full this month already because of Stephanie. <laughs> Me? You know, I can't control the dice, Abby. I was going to say, don't, don't blame the roller, blame the dice. Well, exactly. You know, it, it, it was your, I don't know, force that put them into that, that role. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of control. Gosh, have you seen it, what it does to me sometimes? <laughs> if I could control the dice, that wouldn't happen. You also got some pretty mean prompts, too. Yeah, like, everything was really long books. I know. Like, <laughs> I know. It was like, oh, 
you haven't put enough long books on it let's have another one <laughs> the uh, 550 to 580 pages i've got that one before it's so hard i had to like scour my bookshelves to find one that's perfectly in that range i was like oh i've got a good book oh no it's 530 pages mm -hmm. 540 and then i got goodreads up and i was like okay there's gonna have to be something here that i own I was, like, why I was is nothing between 550 and 580 why are they all like just below or just just above I just randomly picked that number when I was making the prompts so I probably should have looked at books and picked a number that was like I had more books within that range but no just went ahead and no no I felt so bad I felt like that was probably if you're not going to read a book on your TBR that's going to be the one is the that 550 to 580 page book what was it the women's war Women's War, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's probably the one she's not going to read if she doesn't read some. I'm going to read them all, Stephanie. Have fun. Are you, are you going to do it? <laughs> Keep the faith alive. Keep the faith. Well, if you I, do, I'll, I owe you a book because that was a mean game. Well, I've, I'm not, like, work is quieting down I'd, and I've, I've got a week off. Uh, so I've got a week, a week more of work and I've got a week off. So I should have a bit more time then. Um, I've read one book so far, so right. I, I do need to pick up the pace. But considering I didn't read for Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I am, um, I guess, now halfway through this. So That's that, but that means, but uh, I still have the very big ones to. Tackle. Yeah, I was going to say, aren't those your shortest ones on the? On the TV? Yeah, I've tackled the romance and the short one. That's fine. It gives you some like. Yeah, no, I was looking at um, the third Lycanius book, The Light of All That Falls, and I was like, I don't think I can tackle that just yet because that's 800 pages. And what happens if that takes me a whole week and then I don't read anything? And I just got the audiobook for that behind. on the sale. Did you get, do you have the audiobook for it? No, but I do have an Audible credit to use. So, yeah, I get there the huge Audible sale that was just on. I got the whole Lycanius trilogy. I'm pretty sure Kyle spent like three hundred dollars in the animal sale. I believe it. That was such a good sale. If you could find the books that were like five or six bucks, it mm -hmm. was so good. I mean, not all of them are on sale like that, but still. Well, I mean, it might not be. I I don't know, but I should get more reading done when I don't have to work. What is your are week you going off anywhere? Hmm? Are you going anywhere? Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to Lisbon. Nice. We were looking at going to New York. Um, <gasps> yes. But it was just so expensive. Oh. It was so expensive. We were like... Uh, uh, I so love New York. Half the price for going to Lisbon. So. Well, I guess when we go to New York, um, my husband has family there. And so we always stay with them. And they're in like a really good location. And it's right next to Central Park and stuff. Um, so it does save on a lot of stuff like not having to buy a hotel and for transportation like they tell us how to get places or we walk so but if you're trying yeah if you're like paying for everything there I bet it would be really expensive yeah, have you been to New York Abby I've never been no I've never been that's why we Abby. want to go it's just mm -hmm. we were like the flights were expensive the hotels were expensive and we just went let's look at somewhere else yeah my, my husband and I spent um a weekend in New York City and I mean, and we drove down, like we didn't obviously didn't have to fly or anything like that, but paying for parking, paying for the hotel, like that alone was, I think, $700, $800 for yeah. the entire weekend. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It's true. It's very expensive. Well, there you go. L Lisbon seems to be like, I've heard lots of amazing things about it. So I don't like, there's a nice consolation prize at Lisbon. Exactly. <laughs> Be like oh no I just I'm just going to Lisbon that's all oh. <laughs> I've never been to Portugal so you know you went to Spain recently didn't you November my stepmom's family lived there so we hadn't seen them for ages since the whole and COVID thing so we just went, to, went to the DR too right uh, yeah look I at work, you I work in travel like so like the trips that I've done this year have all been with work um oh boo. Oh, I, boo. I love it i am so jealous <laughs> and but i'm like i might as well whilst the world's open like you should. That's, true. that's true if i could get paid to travel i would 
jump at it. Well, would I? Because I hate flying, so... Mm, I want to travel, but I hate flying, so... Oh, I would do it. I, I read when I fly, so... That's actually one of my biggest, like, getting books done on vacation is the flight. Like, usually I'll finish a book on the flights, and so... I actually I really love only read is. books on flights because I'm too anxious. So I can't concentrate on anything new. Can I have to read something? something. No, I don't, but I should. I used to fly a lot. And every time I used to get so scared that I would cry. And so the flight attendant would come over and be like, oh, is it your first time? And I would just say yes every time. <laughs> <You did. laughs> my like, 15th flight of the of the year. And I'd be like, yeah, this is my first time ever. <laughs> just be like crying. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I remember yeah, my, like, uh, I like when I get there. It's nice. Like the week beforehand is like nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Then like extreme panic before getting on the plane. Then cry on the plane. Then happy when you arrive. It's like my, that's my travel, you know, it's how it goes every time. Oh, yeah. you should take something to just like chill you out for the flight. And that way you don't have like the panic before and like the exhaustion afterwards. afterwards. <laughs> yeah. My thing with flying is I hate takeoff. And I hate landing and then turbulence. Like if, if it's just a smooth ride all the way, I'm fine. And you don't have to take off or land. So. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, I was just like, I'm not moving when, at all. <laughs> when Aaron and I went down to Florida, um, that I was so worried because with COVID and everything, I'm like, are they going to not serve drinks? Like I need liquid courage. <laughs> I, need I need alcohol. <laughs> and uh, thank God they had alcohol. So I was like, all right, give me a whiskey and, and Coke. And because uh, that I need it. Um, but also on the flight back. Um, so on the flight there, we were, uh, it was three person seat. My husband had the, like the window seat. Cause no way in heck I was having the window seat. I was in the middle and there was a guy right beside me. He obviously did not like me as a seatmate because every time I'd freak out, he'd be like, <coughs> and he'd get so mad. And then on the flight back, such a nice lady. I'm pretty sure, actually, I know she was a flight attendant because so, she was just flying. I don't know if she was flying home or whatever. And there was a really bad um, episode of turbulence, enough that where like everything like started shaking like really, really bad. And I just started bawling. My husband's grabbing one hand. The lady's just patting my other hand. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't like flying. Clearly, um, we should never fly together, Evie. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, it would just be like a, a really bad, like, codependent, weird thing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, dear. Have oh, do you tried? just not realize that you're like, very have drunk? Have you put a lot of effort life? into that? <laughs> I was going to say, you're not drinking enough then. <laughs> Maybe that's because they only give you like, actually, I was about to say they give you small measures, but they don't like, when I've had alcohol on a plane, they're like, you have this tiny glass. They're like, here's your yeah. shot of whatever. Take it all. Yeah, they give you regular measures, I think. But in a very tiny glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've had the pain in my ears. So I, I got ruptured eardrums a lot when I was a kid. And so when I would fly, like I have to pop them myself as we go up and we come down. Otherwise, it's just like excruciating. I was always just told to have, like suck on a boiled sweet when you take off and land. A boiled sweet? Like for me as a child. That? First, we have Marmite. Now we're boiling our candy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sarah, do you know what this is? No. Oh, what are the British doing over there? What is yeah, a boiled okay. sweet? <laughs> so a hard sweet, like a rhubarb and custard, or oh, just like a hard oh, candy. Like a original, yeah. or like a, a hard sweet. Okay, just a, a hard candy. Okay. I gotcha. <laughs> That's like a boiled one. Like, what's it doing in your mouth? <laughs> Complimentary drinks. There you go. Sal's got the. Uh... The translation, hard candy. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I, 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 who would have thought the, these words that are so foreign? <laughs> I know. Okay. Shall we do a bit more reading? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, shall we go until 35? So that's another 30 minutes? Yeah. Or do you want to go to 45 or? Either or. I'm good for longer. It doesn't matter. Well, I've already got the banner for 45. So. 45 All right, there you go. There we go. 
<laughs> it saves me having to edit it.
Hello. Hello. Hi, Stephanie. I saw you like, I was like, but, but I'm so close to finishing my chapter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. it wasn't so well so timed this time. My I neither. Had... I'm in the middle. Yeah. Mine was good this time. I ended right on a chapter. Also, my children are home, so there's going to be a lot more thumping now. I will keep it on mute unless I'm talking. You're fine. Well, it was a successful listen for me. Good. Yeah. Powering through. Nice. Nice. You like it, Abby? Yeah, I'm really liking it. it it's bizarre. Um, I feel, yeah, I, it does really feel like I'm being told some sort of fairy tale. And it reminds me a bit of Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silva Marina Garcia. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. I got like 20 pages of into this. It's, uh, I'm not sure how I feel, but like, I'm not, not liking it, but it's, uh, it's definitely weird and different and not what is what I was expecting uh, for fantasy. So, yeah. And I realized that there are literally a hundred chapters in this book. So okay. they're at least, you know, bite-sized. So yeah, those are really short chapters. Yeah, at least I can keep you like motivated. Yeah. If they're quite short. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading More Do by Alex Phoebe. Phoebe? Phoebe. I don't know how you say it, but... Oh, good. Okay. Matt said it, it took a while for him, for Mordo to get going for him. So, okay, that, that makes me feel much better. Yo. Yeah. Oh, Mendelin only has 30 pages left in an autumn war. You, you've read that, right, Sarah? Yeah, so I just haven't read the, the final one because I'm waiting until after we do the live show. We were thinking about doing it tomorrow, uh, but I don't know if it works for Alan, so I don't know if we're going to be doing it tomorrow or if it's going to be next weekend. The challenges of live shows and trying to schedule them. Um, do you have yeah. any suitcase kind of stuff? Suitcase kind of stuff? Uh, <laughs> like stuff that is like a suitcase. I wanted to do my thing that I was talking about was my Unitopia stuff. Well, I don't know, see. Maybe in the back. Suitcases, yeah! I'm, I'm reading Redemption in Indigo oh, by Karen Lord. <laughs> City of no. Bones. Is that the Cassandra, Cl Cassandra Clare book? Okay. Yeah. There's like City of Blank for so many books. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, That's true. That is a thing. City of City Bones is one of those, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's the first one. The first one. Mm hmm. Mini yeah. Sarah. <laughs> uh. Is Emily's reading full screen? Is that the final trilogy? Okay. And my practice was no full state is the last one in the Tawny Man trilogy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got a big got a long way to go. Yes. Yes. I love that book though. It's so good. What what are you up to now? In I just finished the um Rain Wild Chronicles, so I just have the final trilogy left. So how did you feel about Rain Wild? Because most people better? seems to, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not, it was not good. So it's it, basically yeah. universal that it's not good. Yeah, I, I actually went into it with a very open mind too. Because I was like, you know what, maybe I'll like it. Like I totally could. And I'm just like, this is not even that enjoyable to read. Like I feel like if it wasn't Realm of the Elderlings, I would have DNF'd it. But I wanted to just read everything in Realm of the Elderlings, so... So many people I have heard say that if it wasn't Realm of the Elderlings, I would, yeah. which is funny because the like tiny little bits of, I've only read Ship of Magic so far, but the tiny bits I get, have seen of the Rain Wilds, I'm like, this seems really cool. I would love to I read know. about this. So I know that's exactly how I felt too. I was like, I want to read about the Rain Wilds. I think I'm going to love it. Yeah. 
So I think you probably can skip it in all reality. There are a few things that happen in there that are going to be probably a little bit important, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. I think you can skip Rainwilds and move on to the last trilogy if you want to. In so my is, is, so yeah. is the writing like kind of a step down or is it like plot wise, nothing really happens or without giving any, obviously any spoilers. Right. So it- I feel like plot wise, I didn't really care. I did not like the characters really. Like I, di- I didn't feel invested in any of the characters, which I feel like is very rare in a Robin Hobb book because that's what she does the best, in my opinion. She writes amazing characters. Um, so I just didn't care about the characters. I thought that they, most of them were really annoying. Um, I didn't like the dragons. I thought they were just very annoying as well. Um, I didn't like the focus of the plot. I know me too. I want to rant too, but I don't want to give away any spoilers. And I feel like if I just start going off, it will spoil it. Um, But yeah, there's a lot of the focus of the plot is on mating. And I choose that word because that is the word that Robin Hobb chooses, not that this is my word. (laughs) And so it's just so weird. Like it doesn't even feel like Robin Hobb to me. Like the writing style is fairly similar. Like it has her kind of cadence and flow to it, but no like it it could have been like two books instead of four and given us all the information we needed and cut out the parts i just did not care about it's like a teeny bopper cw like tv show feel almost I'm like this is weird was it, was it the publisher that wanted it to be four books or like yeah but i think she was gonna have it be two but still have the same amount of content just be two really long books and they divided it into four because you know UK does that so but they are shorter right it's not like it's four 800 page no yeah they're shorter I think the longest one's like what six something maybe I can't remember but yeah they're definitely a lot shorter but they're just (laughs) I don't understand why she did this she is such an amazing author and I just can't get how she wrote these books well, I, I've, I mean, as someone who hasn't even started Royal Assassin yet, um, so I've got a long ways to go, but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to do publication. So like, but is it, what was it? Between Tawny Man and Rain Wild, she wrote a tr- trilogy outside of Realm of the Elderlings. So oh, I think I'm yeah. actually, like after Tawny Hold Man, son, trilogy, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to read that trilogy and then see if maybe... Like maybe that's why things are different for Rain Wild. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I just I I did not care. It was have you read any of her books that she's published under her own name, Stephanie? Like are her other books more like Rain Wild? Like, does she like writing that like angsty drama stuff when she's not writing as Robin Hobb? I don't know. I actually haven't read anything besides her Robin Hobb books, but I am interesting interested in trying some of those out because it just felt so different. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. It, it just wasn't good. Like, I, I want to say good things about it, but it's like, I, in my opinion, it just really wasn't. But I am interested to try out some of her other stuff. And I do have the first book in, like, the Soldier Sun trilogy. So I think I will try that out as well and see if maybe there's some similarities there. I don't know. I have um, the Life Ship Traders to try. I wasn't a I big fan. I love that one. I wasn't a big fan of Assassin's Apprentice, but this was many, many years ago. Um, Did you read the whole trilogy or just Assassin's Apprentice? Just Assassin's Apprentice. Okay. Yeah. In my head, I was going to love Robin Hobb. It was she she was going to be my thing. Um, and then I never made it past the first book. And then I saw on booktube over the past year, like everyone loving her works. So I was like, okay, I'll give her another try. Let, let, but let's try the live ship one. Yeah, I mean, you the thing is, way. is that it's like 800 odd pages, 900 pages. And I'm like, oh, this is a, like, for an author that I didn't love the first book, it's a bit of a commitment to go into an 800 page book of theirs. That's true. That's true. I feel like the live ship is different, though. Oh my gosh. Some, some sort of construction and deconstruction going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I love live ship traders. Um, and I think it definitely has a different feel to it than The Assassin's Apprentice. I mean, there's still a lot of similarities, but. (laughs) 
thing is, I could just imagine you being very ranty and dramatic about them. Yeah. He and I have been chatting back and forth on Voxer about him. And (laughs) he had this like three minute voice clip where he's like, this is so stupid. None of this needed to happen. We learned nothing. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Uh, oh dear hot take i think a lot of people actually do agree that a lot of robin hobbs books are pretty maybe a little longer than they need to be i would even admit that that there's a lot in there that could be cut out but i like it i don't care i enjoy yeah. them i love a royal assassin i really do like when if someone says that assassin's quest was too long I don't, like, personally, I don't think it's too long, but I could be like, yes, I see where Mm. you might think that. But for Royal Assassin, I just, I can't imagine anything being taken out. Yeah. Yeah. Seems seems like there's some conflicting opinions. (laughs) I know. Everyone has their thoughts. Who do I know? I think Brightness Katie Reads actually really liked the... Rainwild Chronicles. I think she's the only person I know of who has actually enjoyed them. Who has liked it? Yeah, she just liked the angsty, soapy feel to it. And I'm like, it's true. It just, it's kind of like that. That's fair. Does she like um, reading romance? Like, is there some sort of correlation there? Like, if you're a sometimes romance reader, like, will you get more out of Rainwilds or is it just I like to I don't fantasy know. sci-fi? heavy i think she has read some romance she has but she doesn't read that too much i think she does like romance in her books and she definitely like has her favorite um pairings that she likes but i honestly i enjoy romance on occasion but i did not feel like this was very romance like the romance wasn't done very well in here i'm gonna be honest i don't really like the romance in hardly any of hobbs books i'm not there for the romance so (laughs) Oh. yeah that's that's kind of how I felt in all reality I was watching Vampire Diaries and like similar vibes <laughs> I mean sometimes I mean, it, you need that type of like storytelling so oh yeah if you want that go for it I personally did not want that from Robin Hobb so. <laughs> what you wanted that from the Vampire Diaries not from Robin Hobb <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I knew that's what I was getting into the Vampire Diaries with. Oh, I was making my husband watch it with me. And we we just started season three. And he's like, it's almost done, right? Like, it's almost to the end. I'm like, oh, honey, no. There's eight seasons. How many seasons like, are there? Oh, wow. Eight. There's eight. He's like, I'm done. He's like, that's it. You watch this on your own. I'm, I'm done. I don't think I've ever um, seen an episode of the Vampire Diaries. I got to like season six, I think. It's so bad. <laughs> it, it's it is a a not so guilty pleasure. Like it knows yeah. what it's doing, and it's very intentional. Um, but I will say, if, whether you've seen the series or not, just watch. Uh, crap! What's her name? Ginny. Ginny something. Uh, she did like a two and a half hour video recap of the entire Vampire Diaries series. Ooh. Uh, crap! What's her name? Ginny. Oh, yeah. Australia has awoken. Uh, Nicholson. Morning. There you go. Ginny Nicholson. That's the channel name. Lana! I do agree. I think Tawny Man Trilogy Mantrilo- is my favorite so far. It's so good. There's, there's just so many different fantasy authors to try. Right. It's true. I mean, if you don't like Hob, don't make yourself. No, I'm, oh, no I'm going to make, make myself try live shifts. At least the first one. Yeah. And then depending on how that goes, then that's, that's my definitive answer. Well, I know some people have started with live ship. I wouldn't recommend it if you want like the experience, but it's fine to do that if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. want to. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I just, obviously I want to give that one a try it's just hard to like think about when I'm like okay well if I want to read epic fantasy I could continue with Stormlight Archive or I could read yes you could xyz or whatever maybe this is what I should do with the wheel of time a video where I wa- I read only the first and then the last book <laughs> oh series. my gosh you that should would be amazing. Do that. that would be so funny 
thing is, or though, you just read like, Brandon Sanderson's books because those are the ones I'm reading Wheel of Time to get to. Mm-hmm. The thing is, though, if you read the well, you've read the first book, haven't you? Or have you not finished it? Me, I'm yeah. I'm to page two hundred. I was like, are you still going? Because you, you, for no. a few months, for a while, <laughs> I, like, I will finish this. Yeah, for a while, I was really committed. I thought I could do it, and I could not. Like, I have never struggled so much to read something in my entire life. It was it was painful every time. I Like, I'm really sorry if anybody who loves Wheel of Time is on the stream. I know Andrew's That's here, but I just, like, it brought me physical pain. And then it would be sitting on my night table, and I would look at it and feel like, actively resentful towards it i'd be like how oh, dare yeah. you be there for me to read like why <laughs> does not sound healthy <laughs> so i had to stop and i was like maybe one day i'll listen to the audiobooks and then it won't maybe it won't pain me i really well. like the audiobooks they're um michael kramer and kate redding and i i really enjoy them mm-hmm. um so i think the audiobooks are really good and also abby the audiobooks for the live ship traders, I don't really love the narrator all that much. She's pretty decent, but they're super easy to listen to while you're doing other things. Unlike other high fantasy books, I feel like you can listen to them while you're okay. cleaning or doing other stuff. So, and they're also on script, at least for me. Okay, awesome. Oh, there's a few uh, first law thing. Yeah, it's first, first laws over there, it's on the shelf. Is anyone getting the Broken Binding special editions of First Law? No, no. I have the first right? book sitting on my shelves, just staring at me. <laughs> the, that the Broken Binding shipping is really expensive. To, it is. To get it here. That I feel like, like yeah. you're in Canada. Oh, right? I'm looking at the um, Sanderson um, four novels that he announced, and then I saw the shipping, and I was like, the shipping's like more than the books, right? To other At least countries me in the UK. Are you are you going to still get the hardcovers? I haven't committed yet. Well, I I told um, Joanna this, and if you want to, you can get them and send them to me in the US, and then I can send them to you. I don't mind. I don't know how much that would would that work out much that that much cheaper. I don't know. I don't know, actually. I mean, I don't know if they have different rules they have to follow since they're like a business shipping versus just like personal shipping. Because I mean, when I lived in Thailand, I could ship stuff back to the States fairly cheap. It wasn't that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just like, it ends up being like 60 pounds per book. Yeah, it definitely won't be that expensive. When I lived in France, my mom used to send me boxes all the time and they were never yeah. that expensive. Like that's ludicrous. I think it's because it's like a, they have to pay certain fees because it's like a business shipping it there versus like private people shipping there. I'm pretty sure because that's what the, the Broken Binding went over at one time, like why their shipping is so expensive to other countries. And I think it has something to do with that. Like you have to have certain like license to ship there or permits. Like you have to go through certain channels that's in order to do stuff. Food. Yeah. I like that's the broken binding at least said they were expecting it to become cheaper. So I don't know if maybe it's an insurance thing or yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But I do know well, that like individual personal shipping isn't as bad. Yeah. Like if this was confirmed, if there was like a confirmed glance or tour, whatever that they had them, then I'll just wait until those were released. Well, he's said he's going to publish them traditionally, but I don't think he's said that they will be hardcovers, and I don't know if they'll have the same covers as mm. this Kickstarter. They probably won't in all reality. No. Yeah. I mean, I would expect if Galantz get them here in the UK that they would publish them as hardcovers because that's what they do for all of Sanderson's books to begin with. Right, yeah. I just don't know like what rights they'll get if they do it since mm-hmm. he already published them in hardcover, whether yeah. that'll be like a rule or something. I doubt it, but you never know. Yeah, it was it was a $30 book. It was like a Barnes & Noble Jurassic Park special edition thing. $30 book, and it cost me $70 to send it to Norway. Oh, yeah. Oh. Why was it so cheap from Thailand? I swear I would send boxes home, like Christmas presents and all that stuff. And it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I mean, it wasn't like five bucks, like in the US, but like, I was like 20. Yeah. I mean, I'd happily wait until they were all four published and then just get them all in one go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I, 
I actually did chime in during his like live stream Q and A thing after the whole announcement, and someone asked about like, oh, why not? You know, all at one, and it's, it's one of his like helpers, I guess, was like, oh yeah, logistically, like they're you know processing, like it's just not feasible for us to do that. And I'm like, no, like it's if you're actually really efficient, like because I work for a retailer and I know about our processing, like and uh, distribution centers, like. He's literally got a machine behind him. He can implement a thing of like, okay, these these orders are going to non-US or non-Canadian um, locations, but set them aside. We bind them up all together. Like, yeah, but you'd have to store them somewhere. I don't think he has that. He, I mean, he has over 100,000 backers at this point. I don't think he has a warehouse big enough to store 400,000 hardcover books. I mean... It looks like he's got a huge warehouse, so. Well, I mean, it's pretty big, but it has other stuff there, too. Like, he's already using it for things. It's not like it's just for this Kickstarter. Plus, he's going to have all the merch that he has going on. You're going to have to have, like, places within there for people to work, to box it all up, and to get it prepped to go. Like, it would, yeah. I'd be curious to know how many out of all the backers are international, though. Because I think it's a significant amount are. I mean, obviously, I think the U.S. is the highest because it's cheaper here, and like, it, I think it does limit like your yeah. international reach having the prices so high for your international buyers. Like, why can't um, he get like a storage area somewhere within Europe? That would probably be really hard as well. I mean, you'd have to have some sort of like a business. Like Ferry would have it. Like they opened a US. Yeah, but they're huge and they are very oh, well. Sanderson. Yeah, but he's uh, he's Brandon Sanderson. He's not like a business, you know. I mean, it's like Dragon Steel like Entertainment. Like as as the resident Brandon Sanderson hater, like he's literally got an entire publishing house behind him, distribution center. He's got everything. He's he's got it at his disposal. He can just flip the switch. He just it doesn't sound like he really wants to. So I don't know. I think it would take a lot of effort to go international. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I, I have nothing to add because I do, I do not know. <laughs> okay. Well, shall we get back to our books? Okay. Um, shall yeah, we yeah. do until 45 again, just so I don't have to create a new banner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds good.
Hello. Hi. I said hello and I was like, no one's responding to me. And then I realized it was because my mic was still on mute. And I was like, oh, they must be really engrossed in their books. Super into them. I was having trouble with my bookmark, apparently. It's so my. I don't know. So far, it feels like a weird mixture of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is already a dark story, but mm -hmm. it feels even darker. And like, a, I mean, I know Tim Burton directed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but it, like, it feels like very, I don't know, it just feels very dark and it's kind of whimsical at the same time. It's just, it's, it's interesting. It's cool. So I stopped doing my puzzle to like read and listen. And okay, the below. You're almost done. Front. Holy crap. You're going to finish that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have like 50 pages left. Wow. Um, you see, Stephanie, I told you I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Be thinking about what book you want. N no. <laughs> I've, I've got a long way to go before I get to completing <laughs> this TBR. And also, am I allowed to, like, if I start the final book before the end of the month? If, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I was checking that was that was fine. Like, if I don't quite get nope. to the finishing it. Yes, you have to at least start it. Okay. So this has a blurb here that says, this is one of those literary works of which it can be said that not a word should be changed. Well, there are differences. So obviously someone did change some of the words. <laughs> That's funny. But I was like, why would you put that on, on the book? And then there are differences between the audio book and the physical book. I mean, they're not like, there's, I hardly noticed any. It's like a few words here and there, or they've like changed the structure of the sentence. So the words are the same. Um, or on some of them, it's just the sentence has been constructed differently. And then on some of them, it's like they've used the word looked and it's changed to seemed or something along those lines, like really minor changes. But I just found it really funny when compared with this blurb. That is kind of funny. It's just kind because of, it's actually on there. I, I was listening and like reading and listening along to a book and an entire chapter that was in the physical book wasn't in the audio book. So it's weird. A whole chapter. I've never had that happen before. I've had like things change, but never a whole chapter, just not there. Uh, that that is bizarre like it was weird like this is very hardly takes me out because it's, it's not all the time it's just a few right. sentences here and there but that 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 would be confusing i i will say that i when i was listening to the fall of hyperion i was do i was immersion reading it mm -hmm. and there were full like it wasn't a, like a full chapter but there were sentences like that were skipped over and pretend I'm queen. Um, and like, l like you said, Abby, like, just different structure of different sentences. It wasn't like it was consistent enough that I noticed, but it didn't like hurt the story in any way. Right. I've noticed that in Robin Hobb books too, where they'll sometimes like leave out a whole sentence, but they don't talk. Oh, sorry. Sarah's daughter, you have the longest of loveliest hair. Oh, it's very, very, very long. Do you want to say hi? No. No? You just want to say no? <laughs> she did ask when, when we were off, Evie, if your real live name was Evie because of Evie the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> what I was just going to ask, uh, did you name the bat Juliet? Do you like the bat? Evie, is who sent us the bat? The bat? He sent us Bixby? Bixby, yeah, she's Bixby. Bixby that I stole and then I threw up on her and then I stole her again because now she's not in your room anymore because I took her. She's in my room now, but I'm glad you told everyone that when you were sick, she she was a, a victim of that. Oh, your brother's calling out. Ah, I better go get my tipping dollars. All right. <laughs> did you say? Did she say pippin dollars? Uh, yeah, they're making the bank of Pippin, and they're creating a currency that's called Pippin Dollars. Nice. Or at least they're not making Pippin the actual bank. And that's true. And that's true. They're <laughs> not making dollars out of Pippin. <laughs> Although if we were going pound for pound, he's probably worth a little bit of money. <laughs> Poor Pippin. Oh, Pippin. 
it all feels very dramatic as a child the the sudden Definitely. energy and mm -hmm. yes the in and out i'm like that's far too much energy for me i just don't have it just don't have that that amount left in me <laughs> when she came down when we were reading she was pointing to everyone she was like who's that i was like that's evie she's like who's that that's stephanie she's like who's that i was like that's abby she said oh your british friend <laughs> <laughs> Well, according to Alan, I'm not British, so that's true. I should get her to listen. Well, she knows what Alan sounds like. I'm going to tell her Alan's my British friend. She's going to be like, "No, what are you talking about? He's American." What part of Canada do you live in? Newfoundland. Gotcha. So, yeah, I used to live in Montana, like right up on the border. On the border, excellent. Pretty close to it. Like my, a, a lot of my family was like. 10 minutes from the border and then we'd moved farther down a little bit but yeah so. awesome and you said you're in utah now right yeah <laughs> yeah is it warm where you are now stephanie or is it still cold it's actually warmed up quite a bit it's much warmer than it usually is this time of year we don't even really have snow on the ground anymore which is super unusual um yeah so it's actually pretty nice out right now which is kind of crazy Sorry, I don't know if I was supposed to hear any of that. It just came. No, like, we were wave. talking about the weather. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it's a very British thing to do to say, oh, what's the weather like? Uh, no, I love it. Also, this comment about ch children's energy being chaotic good is like the most yes, like accurate comment that I've ever seen. It is all the time. Andrew knows he's still here. He, Whenever I'm on Voxer, I have to take pauses. I'm like, okay, we need like a like a shouting pause and not to stop and then start start talking Whereas again. Whereas I generally vox, like, I generally vox. Is that, can you can you verb voxer? I think so. But if I'm out on a walk and so you'll have patches where I'm like in a quiet spot and then suddenly loads of cars will come along and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to stop. <laughs> There's too many cars here. That's awesome. Yeah, I have to deal with Max and he, like, I swear when I'm on a meeting or when I'm at work, like if I start talking in a meeting, he thinks that I'm talking to him. So I'll like just rush up. And like when I'm sending voice messages, that's when he decides to grab the squeakiest toy on the planet and just squeak, squeak, squeak all the time. <laughs> this happens. So when you are in med school, when you are interviewing for a residency program, they do this program in Canada. It's called CARMS. I don't know if it's called CARMS in the US or not. If Kate was here, I could ask her. But basically, like, you have to apply to all the schools that you would like to be a resident at. And so what you do is you rank those schools. Yeah. And then those schools rank you. And they don't see your ranking. You don't see their ranking. But wherever you match up at, like, the yeah. highest crossover, yeah. that is where you are going to go for your residency program. So you, like, if you're in a more competitive program, you interview widely to make sure that you, you know, get a spot somewhere. So I was interviewing for a program in Ontario and because they all happen really quickly, you can make it physically to some. So you kind of like prioritize your top schools and go there in person. But for others, you can do like phone interviews. And Pippin was a puppy when I was doing my residency interviews. And he was like such a like loud, rambunctious puppy that as I was doing it, Andrew was at work. I just had a bag of treats. And I promise this is not why Pippin is chubby. I don't do this all the time. <laughs> but I just had this giant bag of treats and was like continuously feeding them to him as I was doing the interview on the phone. Because I was like, I need you to not be yourself right now. I need you to be like a nice quiet dog for the next 25 minutes. And it was like one of the most like hilarious but stressful moments of my life. Like at the time I was like, this is horrible. What's happening? But now when I look back, I'm like, that was hilarious. <laughs> was just like continuously giving him food. What specialty did you go into? Psychiatry. Oh, fun. I've had multiple people t t talk to me this week, like when I, when I was in the office, wherever they're like, so when you're working from home, like you can really hear your boyfriend and hear him working. I was like, well, you can't at the moment because he's he's on leave. So you, you can't hear him at the moment. They're like, yeah, yeah. But whenever we have a meeting and he's got a meeting, you can really hear him. You've had noisiest coworker ever. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, That's my I my hear him shouting and swearing down the phone at his colleagues. <laughs> yeah, my my boss is um so over the past obviously two you know year and a half two years, um so my boss has obviously been working from home, but she only lives like thirty minutes away from me. Um, and her boyfriend, who is also a manager at the same company that we work at, um, moved in with her had moved in with her recently, and 
they had this whole office set up and they're like, oh yeah, it's your desk and my desk. And it quickly turned into, okay, you're going to go downstairs because like both of them were just get louder and louder throughout the day. So th th you could hear over the other person and it was just hysterical. Yeah, I get that. It thing is that when you're in an office and there's lots of people there and everyone's on the like doing things on the phone, it doesn't really like matter. But as soon as you have that one person, I'm like, shut up. Yeah. Yes, it's more like ambient noise in the office. Like you expect those things to be there, but when it's one person, you just feel every sound. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, I feel like the sounds show up more on like Zoom meetings, team me Teams meetings, whatever you use, than they do on like phone calls. Like, because in the office, when you have meetings, you know, you go into like meeting rooms. Um, but when you're working from home, your meetings are on your computer at the same time as someone else is having meetings. Yeah, I would also lot. like to say that after two years of Zoom, you would think that people would be better about Zoom. So one of my friends is at a conference today. He was like, someone someone left their mic on and they're ordering a snowblower. I am sending them messages to tell them that I can hear them ordering a snowblower, but it's not helping. It's like, this is amazing. I was in a meeting a couple weeks ago. It was like in a, there were a good chunk of people in the meeting and someone forgot to mute their mic. And they were talking about like someone getting like arrested and going to jail. And I'm like, whoa, all right, <laughs> need to mute this person. That's funny. Okay, so shall we do a final sprint so I can finish my book? How long do you think you need to finish? Well, I feel like if we do a final sprint, then I will 45, finish. 45, so she doesn't have to change the banner again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to have to bow out because we are approaching like supper and then bed in fast succession. order now. So, yes, yeah, succession. There we go. The words. But thank you for inviting me. This was really fun. Hopefully, we can do it again sometime soon. And it was nice to meet you, Stephanie. And thanks, everybody. Yeah, you too. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The final one. Dun, dun, dun.
Hello, Monet. Hello. Gracing. Oh, I enjoyed that one. Oh, my hair is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I did too. I really like Gracing. I think Fire is my favorite out of that series, though. I, I'm not too sure. I don't know which one. I finished. Yay. Did you? Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I feel a bit weird because I've literally just read this all today. And I mean, it's short, but like, I feel like I need to go away and like sleep and have some time to process it. I was going to say like star rating or no, uh, not yet. <laughs> I, I, I think it would be four stars. Nice. I like yeah. that. But I'm going to go like sleep and think and like <laughs> collect my thoughts a bit more on it before I like share all my thoughts just because it feels like it's been a bit of a like blur not through any I didn't like plan to binge it it just seems to have been what's happened yeah I feel like this has been a really productive reading sprint like I read over half of Crown of Midnight so wow it's so been like you, a super what did you start it today I was like 20 pages into it so practically <laughs> wow I know, I feel like I need to finish it today now. Yeah. Did you get a lot of Well, it doesn't look like a lot, but I... Um, it's, it's a thick book. 75 pages, that's a lot for me, so... It's also a weird book. Sometimes weirder ones are slower to read. So, I, I mean, it's weird, but, it, like, I'm reading it fairly quickly compared to my normal reading, like, pace. Oh, cool. Um, so, which, which is good, so... I think again, like the short chapters are helping. Yeah, kind of speed. I that love along. short chapters. I feel like that's something I loved in Malice was the yeah. short chapters. I mean, after I got used to the characters, because <laughs> at first it was rough. So yeah, we've got someone else finished their book. Made it halfway, 120 pages. Nice. Yeah. I am liking it, Emily. It's interesting. I f I feel like since I'm reading it so fast, it's hard for me to really pick up on pacing in books when I read them so quickly. Do you feel that way, Abby, when you just like binge it in a day? Like, I mean, I figured that if I've binged, it must have be relatively fast paced yeah. because it's kept my engagement to keep reading it. Yeah. Um, I just hit a very important part. Like, well, I guess I'm a little bit past it, but a really, really big thing just happened. So I'm like, ooh, ooh what we got going on? I'm trying to remember the big things I mean it's been many years since I read that book yeah um but I feel like the things I'm thinking of are towards the end and not the middle yeah it's I mean I still have I'm on like page 260 and there's like 400 something so yeah it's pretty much towards the middle and it's quite quite a big thing Okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's one of the things I'm thinking of. I mean, one of them is like, it's definitely not going to be it because I know where that yeah. one is. Um, but maybe it's the other one that I'm thinking of. I just from memory it was later on, but who knows? Because my memory on uh, books isn't very good. So I feel like it's hard when a lot of things happen from like the middle towards the end to remember like where it was in the book. When I read Jed City in a day, I thought it was super fast and I did not agree. Yeah. See, I read The Secret History in a day and then I did a live show with it and everyone was like, oh, it was so slow. There was such boring parts in the middle and all this stuff. I'm like, I don't remember it being slow. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not that much of a read a book in the day sort of person normally. I um, do. I binge. Yeah, the, the you're only... like right it's all or nothing <laughs> yes the, the only book that i've read in a day let alone well the only book that i've read in one sitting let alone in a day is all the horses of iceland which oh, is a uh, hundred page out. novella so it's but still yeah i i would say that it's it's not fast paced but it's I don't know, it flows really well, like it flows very smoothly. So I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's fast paced, but it flows smoothly enough to where it kind of compels you to keep going in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say this this flowed 
smoothly. I don't think it. I don't think it was fast paced. I think it just flowed. Nice. So, yeah. Do you think you'll pick up any more of her other books? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'd be interested to try the other ones that Angela recommends. I can't remember the name. Let. <laughs> Best of all possible worlds, I think is the other, the one that she talks about a lot. <laughs> you read Legends and Lattes. Was it an e um like an arc? Is that one out yet? Is that like a? That sounds like a cozy mystery type book. I feel like it's a story about an orc that opens like a coffee shop. Am I crazy in thinking this? But I'm pretty sure that's what it's about. <laughs> Oh my gosh, if I'm I wrong, I'm going to be a little it, embarrassed, but... <laughs> I don't know much about it. I believe it's meant to be like a... Instead of a cosy mystery, it's a cosy fantasy. Yeah, I think it's like a fantasy romance with a coffee shop. I yeah, think... no, you're totally right. Am I? Yeah, I mean, it's just... uh, but 260 pages in a morning, that's pretty impressive. Oh, it is out. Okay. I didn't, yeah, I, I saw, um, like, I saw it available on NetGalley. I didn't look into it at all. <laughs> that, that's why I quite like doing sprints, because they, like, I, force mm -hmm. me to not check my phone. I'm like, right, these 30 minutes, these 40 minutes, it's reading time. Whereas... I only really do that when I'm in the sprints, because I'm like, people can see me if I look at my phone. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> Where, whereas if it's just me reading by myself, I'm like, mm, I finished a chapter now. I could check my phone. <laughs> yeah. I can get on TikTok for an hour. <laughs> oh, TikTok. It's so bad. Oh, the time sink that is TikTok. I didn't realize my feed was paused. I said, dang, the sprint is long. <laughs> <laughs> We're really ambitious readers, Monet. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah, we were just planning, we we're doing that whole thing was one big sprint. There was no chatting. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Well, I think we are going to leave it here because for me, it's getting quite late in the day. Um, so yeah. it is my, it's my bedtime now. Well, I'm glad um, you finished. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's getting towards dinner time for Evie. And I just, I guess it's just your afternoon, Stephanie. Yeah, it's like four. <laughs> yeah, I should probably figure out what my husband's making. So, <laughs> but yes, thank you everyone for joining. I'm glad yeah. it all seems as though everyone's has a, had a productive evening of reading with us. And I will see you all soon. Yes, thanks thank for you. joining everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.